Diabetic foot ulcer is one of the most concerning complications of diabetes. The open wound puts the foot at risk for developing an infection. That infection can travel to the bone. A bone infection puts you at risk for needing an amputation to stop its spread. My job is to stop that from happening. My name is Dr. Andrew Schneider, and I'm a podiatrist in Houston, Texas. I recently received a question from a subscriber in the Bahamas about how to dress a wound that is dry versus one that is draining. In today's video, I'm going to discuss exactly that. But before I do, let others know about these videos. Please like, comment, hit the subscribe button, and share on social media. This will help others find the information. I also wrote a book all about diabetic foot ulcers. You can get it for free at www.footulcerbook.com. If you have developed a diabetic foot ulcer, it's essential that you get it treated. It's not a simple injury like a cut. It's a serious, life and limb threatening situation that requires professional guidance to get it healed without worsening. Depending on the characteristics of the wound, it's gonna require different dressings. There's not a one size fits all dressing that's right for all diabetic foot ulcers. First, let's talk about what not to do. Do not use alcohol or hydrogen peroxide to disinfect the wound. Both of these are too caustic and while they do kill all the bad stuff that might be infecting the wound, they also kill all the good stuff that you need to heal the foot ulcer. The same goes for betadine, unless you're specifically instructed to use it by your podiatrist or wound care physician. The dressings that you are going to use for your diabetic foot ulcer will be determined by how dry the wound is or by how much it's draining. Let's start with the driest of wounds, otherwise known as dry gangrene. This is a little tricky. Since I recommend just a dry dressing on your foot if you have dry gangrene. Using any ointment, even an antibiotic ointment, can cause this dry gangrene to become wet and spread. Gangrene is a sign of tissue necrosis and is a sign that there's not enough circulation to the foot. I may do a circulation test in the office and will likely refer you to another physician to assess your circulation. You may require a procedure to restore circulation. In some cases, this can resolve the gangrene. In many cases, however, it's too late and will need to treat it surgically. For all other wounds, the goal is to provide an ideal wound healing environment. If the wound is dry, you'll want a dressing that adds moisture. If the wound is draining, you want a dressing that will absorb the excess drainage and keep it away from the wound. A dry, non-gangrenous wound will respond well to a dressing with a hydrogel. A hydrogel mostly is composed of water. It functions to add moisture to a dry wound and encourages it to heal. Hydrogels don't irritate the surrounding skin and don't adhere to the surface of the wound. They promote wound epithelialization as they partially mimic the structure of the skin and encourage wound healing. Hydrogels are available in gel form. You'll also find them impregnated in gauze. A diabetic ulcer that's only draining a little bit will be ideal for a collagen dressing. These come in sheets or in powder form. The collagen interacts with the wound drainage and converts into a gel. Collagen plays an important role in wound healing. By using a dressing with collagen, it adds this vital component to the wound where it serves as a scaffold to complete wound healing to occur. When there's moderate to heavy drainage coming from the wound, it's often too much for a collagen dressing to absorb, leading to maceration of the wound. In these cases, we need to use something more absorbent to keep the wound drier. The best dressings for wounds, such as these, are alginates and foams. An alginate dressing is derived from seaweed. They're highly absorbent and non-adherent to the wound. Some alginates are impregnated with silver for a greater antimicrobial effect. Alginates are available in sheets and ropes, making them versatile to work wherever the wound is located. The alginate dressing absorbs the exudate from the wound and forms into a gel. Alginates provo provide a moist wound environment by managing the drainage. 
they are capable of absorbing up to 10 times their weight. Another choice for a moderate to heavily draining wounds are foam dressings. Foam dressings can be used as a primary dressing directly on the wound or a secondary dressing over one of the other dressing types to absorb more moisture. Foam dressings are so absorbent that they, they can be used in draining non-infected wounds for several days. These are just the basic wound dressing types and techniques. Wound dressings can be more advanced, such as bioengineered skin substitutes. They also can be more technologically advanced, such as negative pressure wound therapy. But today I wanted to cover the basics. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe so you won't miss another video. I also wrote a book all about diabetic foot ulcers. You can get it for free at www.footulcerbook.com. That link is in the description. If you're concerned that you are developing or have developed a diabetic foot ulcer, don't wait. Give us a call in the office and we'll get you in for an immediate appointment. That link is also in the description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.